Hi guys, welcome to another Drums with Ushin, and today we're talking to the one, the only, Thomas Hoke of Meshuggah. Is he? <laughs> He's here. Uh, we're going to go through his setup, uh, what he uses live on tour with Meshuggah. Um, I guess we'll, we'll start left to right. Yeah, let's do it. You want to start with cymbals, maybe? Yeah, let's go with cymbals. From uh, right here is a 19-inch double-A uh, extreme Chinese. Um, that's kind of the, the Chinese cymbals that I go for. I use the same thing over here, actually, mm. as a stacker. I use a 21-inch version of the same over there as a main china. Let's go back to the left side, though. The, these I don't think Sabian do anymore. They might do it as a, as a custom thing. Yeah. Uh, compression hats. They had them um, for a couple years, uh, I guess. Not many people like them. for Because they sound kind of weird when you, if you're, if you're playing them with a stick. They have a very kind of gnarly, oh, yeah. a very dirty sound. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't really play this, this Hyatt with sticks at all. I kind of stop crossing over. So this is only for, and it has a very strong chick sound for that. Absolutely. So I kind of like them for that. Um, up here, Artisan, 19-inch uh, vault crash, Artisan vault, uh, really kind of Maybe not what most metal drummers would opt for, because it's more of a jazzy symbol in, yeah. a, in a sense, jazzy. But um, um, it's perfect for like punctuations and stuff like that. Um, not too heavy, so it's not like like your body starts uh, vibrating with it. So you, it's easy, easy to mute it. Uh, up here right now, usually uh, this will be either uh, what this is a. Um, vintage ride at 21 inch that I use as a crash. Uh, either this, either vintage ride, um, or I'll use the uh, Evolution 21 inch ride. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is maybe even slightly heavier than this. So, but, but it works, works just fine as crashes. Um, same thing with this thing, uh, Legacy 22 inch heavy ride. It's, it sounds, by the sound of it, it sounds like it wouldn't crash very well. It's a heavy ride, you would think it would just be super thick and have a very pingy sound. But this actually works great for a crash. It's not at all uh, as heavy as the name of it might sound. Artists and Vault again. Hi hat. This is kind of the my, uh, the main hi hats always open. Uh, these are 16 inch, so that would be a, probably a custom order as well. I would guess. Yeah. Um, work really well for that. Um, again, I kind of opt for for darker sounds uh, when it comes to the symbols, all like HHX or HH and and artisan vaults. So the kind of darker simmering sounds that that are maybe not. Um, what most metal drummers go for tend to go for maybe yeah. more like explosion crashes and, and AAX and AA series and stuff like that that are brighter. Um, I kind of like the, the, the darker the darker sound. Even if sometimes they might not cut through as well, but to my ears, they just sound more musical, you know. I got you. And then, like I said, the 21 inch uh, AA Extreme, I kind of really depend on this symbol. This symbol and this symbol, uh, the, the Legacy 22 inch, they're like, if I don't have if I run out, I get nervous. <laughs> it, that's kind of at that point because I've been using the, especially the China, uh, the Chinese, uh, the A, AA Extreme. I've been using for so many years now that that I feel completely lost with 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 another China sound in there. And like I mentioned, another 19, just like this one, 19 inch um, AA Extreme with, the, right now it's a HH sound control uh, crash at 15 inch, which has a little, kind of a little edge to it, and it flattens out. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it really works kind of with anything there. I can take also a 15 inch lid or something and put it up there as long as it's not too heavy. Sure. Because this is basically, that sound I'm not it's too specific about. It's just something that it kind of needs to sound trashy. That's kind of what I'm going for. Um, and then at the very end here, really tightly closed. Uh, Artisan Vault again, uh, 15 inch. Um, oh, yeah. 
So instead of like playing cross stick and adjusting the height of, of with my foot, I can always like play the the my foot on the hi hat whenever I'm not playing double bass, sure. and then just choose if I'm playing a close hi hat or that's, that's a fully open. Yeah. That's brave. Um, with regards to your crushes, if I, if I can just ask a question, how do you go about choosing your crushes? Do they have to kind of fulfill certain roles? Is there a certain interval between them that you go for? Not so much tonality, I would say, as long as they have like a nice uh, like shimmer and they open up. Mm. Uh, it's more about the weight actually and, and like what I use them for. Because this, for example, uh, the Legacy 22, it could, sometimes you get uh, ones that are slightly heavier yeah. and they're actually perfect because they don't wobble as much you know when I'm riding it I and so so that's kind of the main thing with both these is that I ride them a lot and I don't want them to go too crazy mm. uh, so you're like you're chasing happy. chasing the symbol yeah. Yeah. so I'm trying to avoid that and 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 that's why I kind of opted for for really big symbols that I don't have to really lay into too hard yeah um, the sticks and the symbols will, will kind of do the work for me, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're all uh, natural finish as well, so they're a little bit even. Uh, they're a little bit softer than a brilliant finish may uh, be yeah. so sonically. Yeah, uh, that's another thing. I don't really mind. Sometimes, <coughs> like this one, is it's a brilliant that's finish. Brilliant, the, yeah. the the China here and uh, and uh, sometimes it doesn't really matter to me. It can be brilliant mm -hmm. or or um, natural. But usually for the crashes, if I have a choice, I'll go for the natural. Sure. Um, and that's the symbols. It's beautiful. Then, uh, you know, sonar drums, uh, this particular kit, an SQ kit, SQ2. Uh, Macassar ebony finish inside and out, really, really nice. Uh, what, what is it, do you mind me asking? Uh, Macassar ebony. It's Macassar ebony. Yeah. Ah, oh, wow. So that's inside and out, so that's kind of overdoing it a little bit. But <laughs> if you have clear heads on, it kind of looks better, you yeah, know, with yeah. a dark inside instead, instead of a light one. Um, so old sonar drums, sonar snare. Um, this is a, a, a bell, bell bronze or bell brass. Uh, heavy, really heavy snare. Sure. This is a custom order actually by a Japanese store and uh, and um, my, my good friend and drummer Dave Illich bought this in Japan and then noticed that it, the snare bed was kind of off. Oh really? Yeah, so he returned it to Sonor and uh, I knew that he had returned it there and I asked them about it and I asked if they could see if they could just make it wider so it would be centered again sure, and of yeah. course the guy at sonar had no problem with that so they they did that for me and sent me that snare so it's it's a good snare um bell bell brass or bronze snares um have kind of a dark tone mm -hmm. people think that because it's a lathe really heavy snare drum that it would sh sound really shrill and sharp but it's actually kind of the other way around it's kind of a soft sounding snare but the weight of it is what kind of appeals to me not only the sound because if I use a lightweight snare drum I have to tape we have to tape the snare stand on a daily because otherwise it will just be jumping around. I know what so. you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And then uh, skins you have Remo. Uh, yeah. Right now it's Remo Emperor coated so on all the all the batter heads and Emperor X coated on the snare because it can take a lot of beating. Mm. Um, Power Stroke threes coated on the on the kick drums. And those are the kind of kind of the heads that I usually opt for. Sometimes I will use coated pinstripes on the on the Thomas's wall. Sure. Vincent Sticks, great sticks, made in Sweden mm. um, by friends of me um, since many years and uh, I played Vic first for many years but uh, yeah I play these now and they're, they're nice really... your name on the stick as well. Yeah, yeah, I guess, <laughs> yeah. So they make me a um, a signature stick, so they're 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 treating me really good. They're fantastic. And uh, you tape one of your sticks, or do you tape? Both yeah, I do. No, I I tape my right hand stick. So what I use is like one of those. It's not even a drummer's glove because I can't find drummer's gloves that feel comfortable to me. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. is a really kind of a, a soft like glove that that I don't even know what it's used for. 
So it's a re and it's really pliable. You have to you don't have to use any force to kind of close your fist. Yeah. Which yeah. I feel a lot of times with drummers' gloves, it's like they're too stiff, and you have to actually have to use force to just keep your fist close. So with with this and that uh, grip, the the stick tape, the grip tape means I barely have to put any kind of effort into holding this stick. Mm. And that uh, I started using this kind of many years ago because I. I used to cramp up so bad in my in my right forearm, and I would use so much like force just because I sweat a lot, and and the sticks would just get slippery, and it would annoy me, you know, yeah. and I would cramp up. So so this has really helped me actually. And the reason I'm not using it on the left is because every time every time I hit the snare, and I, I play all uh, I play all like rim shots, sure. and every time I hit the snare, the stick kind of goes past the thumb like that. Oh, I got you. So I, I tried actually at one tour. I used a glove and and and, um, and grip tape on the left too, but every hit and it wouldn't slide past it. So this very knuckle right here, this joint would just get really inflamed and like swell up. And I, I had you. it took months to get rid of that. So I, I can't really do it for the left, but the the, the right is the more important one anyway. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> We got a Porter and Davis oh, seat. We got a Porter and oh. Davis um, uh, monitor seat right here. So That's with an amplifier. So I run. Um, and you're running the, the two box yeah. stuff. So this is. Uh, These are fantastic, aren't they? Yeah, the two box brains. I use those. And then one of the outputs goes straight kind of to the amp. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I can also like feel the, the kick drum. So it's just triggers that are mounted, uh, Roland triggers mounted to the kicks. And kicks are the only thing that I, that I trigger. Yeah. Um, so, and, and also kicks is the only thing that I have in the seat. I was gonna ask, so that's, that's pretty much everything that you have? You yeah, it's just kind of for definitions so I can kind of feel better uh, what I'm doing. Yeah, well, you can see there's pedals. I mean, pedals, sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, it's, uh, not an endorsement thing, but I, I prefer these right now. These are kind of the ones that, that I feel work the best for me, and these are Tama Speed Cobras. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, with, with old school heavy Danmar beaters on them, yeah, wood beaters. Monsters. Yeah. So they're the big wooden ones, aren't they? Yeah, so yeah. they're kind of heavy. Um, it, it's difficult with this kind of music because it, it, sometimes it's fast, but a lot of it is, is also very kind of slow and heavy. Sure. So it's hard for me to find a the perfect pedal, the perfect weight of a beater to accommodate in like a slow song like Lethargica and also accommodate bleed. Yeah. You know, you. so, so, uh, but I do opt for something that has a kind of a sludgier, um, heavier feel. And, and, and I, over the years also, I, the, the angle of the beater just kind of kept coming back. Right. Um, I don't know, it just started to feel more natural. I used to play, um, uh, axe pedals for like 10 years and then sure. I played trick pedals uh, like all linkage type pedals yeah, instead of yeah, chains and, and ones, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but once I kind of try to go back to to the more linear type pedal action it just feels more um, feels more like it, it acts the way I wanted to where sometimes I really had to fight with the direct linkage type pedals. Mm. I mean, the direct linkage are fine if you have them, if you play really fast music and you have them kind of set far ahead, but with 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 the linkage and the movement of the linkage, you don't want a pedal that's back here because yeah. it's at some point you're going to almost like straight go to where the linkage bottoms out. I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't benefit really. Yeah. So, so the more I kind of wanted to go back, the, the, I really had to lose those kind of pedals and, and go with something that's more linear like these ones. Yeah. Fantastic. I, I'm pretty sure that's covered everything anyway. I don't think we have anything else left. To Actually, we do. Shore, we shore microphones. Oh, you have yeah. shore microphones. Yeah. So all shore, yeah. All shore microphones and and all shore in ears and and um, all the the the, um, the transmitters and receivers and everything that we use is ice shore. So, very good. Yeah, very good. Uh, we do actually uh, sonar hardware. I believe you have right around. Yeah, the it's the all kids. it's all sonar hardware. Yeah, fantastic hardware. Very hard wearing. Uh, it looks like you've been using it for a while as well. You. Yeah, this this <laughs> particular kit and this these stands have have seen a lot of travel, but they still hold up very good. So. 
look solid, brand new. Solid shoes. things, yeah. Fantastic, Thomas. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Um, yeah, there it is. Check it. <laughs>